Welcome to Cut Through the Noise with Dave Toronto, bringing you the truth behind the headlines in business and current events. Let's go. I'm going to get this out on the table right out of the gate and give you the opportunity to not listen to this conversation right now. Uh, so here's what I'm going to say. I know that we're going through a lot of challenges uh, today. You know, the world's going through a lot of ta- challenges, our country, and, and maybe many of you. Uh, some of you may have lost your job, you know, over the last few months, and, and you're worried about money, and others may be battling sickness or health issues, and then maybe some of you have lost loved ones. So, Anybody that's going through a real challenging situation right now is not likely going to want to hear about me whine about my refrigerator. So this is your opportunity to just spare yourself uh, in this conversation. Now, I will say that it's not just going to be a a wine fest. Uh, I do have some ideas and thoughts that I'm going to share as well. But the reality is, is in the grand scheme of things, my my issue with my refrigerator it is it pales in comparison to uh, some of the real issues that people deal with on a day to day basis. So, uh, with that said, if you want out, check out now because I'm going to start. I want to lead off with a uh, just a quick story about United Airlines. And a friend of mine has told me this story a few times. I always enjoy it. But a number of years ago, there was a band on a, a United Airlines flight. And while they, as they boarded the flight, one of the guys happened to look out the window. And the crew from United Airlines was loading you know, the, the bags onto the plane. And while they were doing that, the guy happened to notice that they were throwing their guitar cases around. And, um, and then when they landed and went to baggage claim to get everything, their guitars were broken. And, uh, and when they tried to resolve the issue with United Airlines, it was a nightmare. United Airlines made it really, really hard to solve the problem. They didn't take responsibility. They, they you know, multiple calls that kind of, you know, weren't getting, weren't getting things done. And, uh, and it, it just became a headache. And so these guys who witnessed the problem uh, were kind of left there like, you know, United Airlines doesn't even care. They're not even looking to fix it. They don't take any responsibility for it. So in response to that, they decided we're going to write a song called United Breaks Guitars. And they and a video, and they made a video with it as well. And they released it on YouTube, and I believe as of yesterday or this week, it, it's it's got like two hundred thousand watches or whatever. I mean, it's significant. And somewhere around along the way, I believe United Airlines made things right. They actually, and and I think it had something to do with you know how how this video took off. But I think United Airlines and a friend of mine used um, this phrase at the time. They had a a, a culture. A, a culture uh, of systemic, plausible deniability. It was almost like, I don't know if it was intentional or unintentional, where uh, it just kind of bled through its employees where people just really didn't care. They didn't care to take responsibility or resolve problems or, or, or really uh, you know, make the customer experience good. They just, it just wasn't there. So this whole systemic problem, United, I believe, acknowledged it and ultimately decided to make things right. So I, I think today everything's cool with it. I, I reference that because it just reminds me of my current experience with Samsung. So I'm not going to spend the whole time talking about Samsung. I'll just say this. I've been a loyal Samsung customer for years. I bought multiple products over the course of my life. It started with a TV, which was excellent, and I swear by it. I think it's, it's a fantastic TV. And I've recommended them to other people as well. When we did some work to the house, the kitchen and the laundry room, my wife and I decided, hey, let's just go with Samsung. I never researched any of it, so I take responsibility for that. But we we have all Samsung appliances in the house. And uh, and they've been okay. I'm not going to say every one of them is bad, but there we've had some we've had some issues. The first issue was with the washing machine, where the motor uh, started grinding, and uh, because it was under warranty, Samsung sent a technician out. The guy said, "Look, I can fix this. I have to replace the motor." Um, when you do towels, when you wash towels, he told us never put more than three in the washing machine. 
And when you look at the size of the washing, I'm thinking three three towels. Are you kidding me? That barely covers the bottom. This washing machine is huge. But what he said is you just can't do it. It can't hold more than three towels. I'm thinking, what do I need this? It's like buying a bag of chips. You got this giant bag of chips, and it's about one-third full with chips. That's what it was like. Uh, that's what he's basically suggesting for the towels, which is fine. We never loaded it up. We'd usually put maybe six or seven towels, but he told us three, fine. He fixed it, repaired, put a new motor in. We've been fine. We just don't put in that many towels in anymore. Good. The other thing that was happening along the way, almost out of the gate, was the ice dispenser in the refrigerator would freeze and not dispense ice. We'd have to try to, you know, thaw it out and take it apart. We called Samsung. It was under warranty. They sent a tech out, and he did something to fix it. But while the guy was here, he said, this is a problem in these refrigerators. It's a common problem. I, I, I fixed it. I hope it, you know, hopefully it lasts. So fine. I didn't think anything of it. Uh, but a few months later, it froze up again, and it wouldn't stop. We called Samsung, and by that time, it was out of warranty. And Samsung said, sir, it's out of warranty. You're going to have... I said, no, 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 no. This has been a problem since the beginning, and the tech said that. I ex- I'm a loyal customer. I've purchased multiple products. I expect you to fix it. So they agreed. They came out. They sent a tech. This time, though, the guy said, this is a problem. It's a common problem in the refrigerator, and it can't be fixed unless I replace the circuit board, Some- something to do with the circuit board. And, I, and he said, now, Samsung will cover that because they know it's a problem. And I thought, okay, interesting. Okay, that's fine. So he, he replaced the circuit board, and everything was fine. And it, and it, and it has been fine for, I, I'm going to say, about a year. And, and now the refrigerator is three years old. And then the other, or just recently, uh, the ice dispenser stopped working. And I looked in in the refrigerator and it's burnt there's something it just burned out the whole the ice trays filled with charcoal or soot and there's this weird smell to it we called samsung again they told me sir it's out of warranty i said i know it's out of warranty but this has been a problem it's the same thing they agreed they sent out a technician and this guy said this can't be fixed and he said you know what this is a problem you have to challenge them they know it's a problem they should give you your money back for this refrigerator or give you a new one that's what they should be doing and he said, "You didn't hear it from me, but this is a common problem, and you got it. You got to push on them." And that's really where the issues have. You know, that's that's really where where my frustration stems from. Is it's been a disaster. And I know I've had I've had people say, "Dave, shut up about the refrigerator. Just buy a new one." You know, what's the big deal? Just buy a new one. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do that because it's a matter of principle. And I bring it up because I I think to myself, I I work full-time, my wife works full-time, and trying to communicate with Samsung is gradually becoming a full-time job. It's literally the the calls into customer service, major, major delays, and when you get a human being on the line, they're not able to make a decision, and you have to retell the same story to every single person that they – bring on to the call or escalate the call too. And most of them end with we're gonna you're gonna get a call back from this this person or this department. And all of those return calls go to voicemail. I don't know why. I don't I don't know what happens, but they they seem to go to voicemail and the message is always we made the attempt to we've made multiple attempts to reach you and because we haven't we're closing your file. And then you have to start the process all over again. So anyway, that that this is where we're at. I mean and we're still in this in this disaster. I ended up joining a Facebook group. I found a Facebook group just looking for advice, and and I and I, I stumbled onto this thing, and it's called Samsung Refrigerator Recall USA. Now, it's got thirty one thousand eight hundred people in this group as of yesterday, dealing with the same type of stuff I am, and it's lawsuit after lawsuit, TV station after TV station trying to help people recover their money. And over the course of the last year, Samsung's had to re- has, has had to refund something like $4.5 million to people for similar problems. Here's the deal. I know that things go wrong with, with products and services. I get that. I get that. I'm not unreasonable. Here's where I want to focus, though. Samsung has a mission statement. And if you go to their website, you can read it. It says, we will devote our human resources and technology to create superior products and services, thereby contributing to a better global society. And I say bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I know things go wrong with products. I totally get that. But there's a group out there of almost 32,000 people talking about the flaws and the inherent flaws in the design of this refrigerator. And I'm like, this is their mission statement. Who created this damn thing? 
We will devote our human resources and technology to create superior products? Are you kidding me? That's not true. If it was about the TVs, I'd say, oh, no, that's true. But when I look at what the what's happened with the other ones and how quick they are to say, oh, out of warranty, out of warranty, you got to be kidding me. What are you dedicating? You're selling broken refrigerators. You would be better off saying, we sell broken refrigerators and then we play dumb about it. If you said that, Samsung, you'd have more credibility. I just don't get it. I, so, and by the way, this is one of the reasons I've stopped I've stopped talking about mission statements and vision statements in my leadership programs. Literally, in the last year, I've eliminated this stuff. And one of the main reasons I've eliminated it is because I feel like it's horseshit. Not, it shouldn't be horseshit, but it is horseshit. Way too many organizations, most have a mission statement of some sort that nobody can articulate from the executive team down. Very few people inside of any organization actually can articulate what their mission statement is. And those that actually can often don't live it, but they can parrot the words. And that's where I think the major problem is. That's where my that's where I feel an inherent distrust, honestly, between employee and employer, customer and 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 company that they leverage. Like I'm a Samsung customer, I've lost trust in Samsung. They are not what they say they are. That's the issue. I would have more respect for them if they literally said we've had problems with this model and uh, and we generally don't like to deal with it. Now I wouldn't like that. But I would have more respect for them. I think about all of the companies out there that talk about in their mission statements, their dedication to their employees or their commitment to customer service. When, you know, yeah, dedication to your employees. I've seen all sorts of companies that are on these best places to work list, but they're riddled with turnover year after year. Or they talk about how they care for their employees. And I think, really? Because your management team is sleeping with the employees. Is that how you care for them? You just you just crawl into bed with them? Is that your way of showing that you care? And I'm, I say that a little tongue-in-cheek, but I also say it because I know it to be a fact in many organizations, but their mission statement s- states otherwise. And I just find that crazy. I find it absolutely crazy. Or, or, you know, service companies like restaurants, for example, that talk about their commitment to customer service, but they don't greet their customers or they don't return phone calls. But I, I so I don't, I don't get it. You know, there, there's a uh, restaurant called Dick's Last Resort. I don't even know what their mission statement is, but their the experience in the restaurant, when you go in, they're rude to you and they're sarcastic to you. But that is well known as you're walking in. So when you sit down at the table and somebody ignores you or gives you a snide remark, it's totally cool because it's what you know, what you expect when you walk in. I'll give you another example. My boys just bought themselves a, a, a used car um, uh, with their own money. And so I, I went down with my oldest son to check out this car. We met the guy selling it. And it's a 14 year old car. It's kind of a piece of crap. It looks okay. It's a Ford Explorer. It looks okay, but it needs work. And the guy that sold it to him said, "You know, this thing's going to need a little work. I, you know, I've 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 taken care of it along the way, but this this you're probably going to have to put a little money into it." And so uh, they agreed that hey, they wanted to buy it anyway, and they bought it, and they were totally psyched about it. But within a week. We took it to a mechanic. Mechanic said, here's what it's going to need. And so we put, they put money into it. And so we're totally fine with it. And they're still very, very happy with it. Why? Because they knew they were buying something that needed work. And they knew they were buying something that was going to require additional money. And they're totally cool with it. What's not cool is when you go to a company that you think is reputable and you buy something or, or, or you expect a certain level of service because this is who they say they are, and you get the exact opposite. I just don't understand that. And that's, what I, that's really the point of this conversation is how do, we, how do we actually behave and act in a way that, that, that reflects what we say we are? And, you know, I, I've had this conversation so many times with my clients or my kids. And I always say, I don't care what you say. I don't care. Words to me are so overrated. I only care about what you do. What are you doing? 
saying something and doing something are not the same thing. I just, I would rather somebody be an asshole consistently and just say, hey, look, I'm, a, I'm an asshole. That's, that's kind of how I am. Because now I know what to expect. I can deal with that. What I can't deal with is you smiling to me and then backstabbing me on the back end. I would rather deal with someone who's a jerk and I know what to expect and they know and they know who they are and they're on the table about it. And I know that's not ideal, but I would rather that than somebody smile to my face and shove a knife in my back when I turn around. And I and I and that's how I feel. That's how I feel. That's how I feel when I watch a commercial for, say, Samsung or United Airlines or any of these companies that claim something, or I see a cl- or I see a company that's consistently among the best places to work. When I know and their employees know that that's not who they are, it's not what they are. That plays in the minds of people. That causes people to say, "Wow, that's that ain't cool." We say we're this, but we're not this. So for all of you out there that have taken the time to create a mission statement, just ask yourself, who created this thing? Is this a reflection of what we want people to think we are? Or is this actually who we are? And if who you are is not what you want to be, then maybe you need to make some changes to that as well. So if anybody out there is a Samsung employee or knows a Samsung employee that um, that is listening, or, or, or I want you to share this with them, and I want this thing escalated. I want the people at Samsung to know that what's actually happening on the ground floor in no way reflects the mission statement of the organization. And if you want to build trust, and maybe you don't, maybe you couldn't care less, and that's kind of how I feel. But if you want to have a trusted relationship with your customers then be what you say you are. Escalate this thing, and uh, and please share your stories with me. If you have any issues with customer service or you feel like you've been wronged uh, by, by a company like Samsung, let me know about it. People need to know about it, and we need, we, need to, we need to elevate the game out there. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Cut Through the Noise with Dave Toronto. Please subscribe, and for more information, check us out on Instagram at CTTN Podcast. Oh,